Take a look at these two drawings. One is from 2018, the other is from this week. Both of these drawings put my heart and soul to the test, and despite the five year gap, I was making the exact same mistake. My stress levels were through the roof, and for what? What is it about drawing that pushes us to our limits? Could it be possible to drop that weight and make better art? No. I'm kidding, of course it is. Chapter 1. The Need for Control Making art is really hard, man. We've all been there. It's crazy how the simple act of making lines on a page can bring about so much stress, and yet, here we are. The thing about drawing is you can't run away from the things that are stressing you out. When you're staring at a blank page, it's all right there, ready to confront you. Drawing's a lot like meditation in that way. You're sitting down, slowly making marks on a blank piece of paper, seeing what ideas come up and what thoughts come to mind. You don't have much control at all over the outcome, because learning to draw is entirely about training your intuition, which is inherently the stuff you can't control, right? Learning to draw, you're really just pointing yourself in a direction and course correcting as you go, making small adjustments to your trajectory. Oops, I messed up that eye, maybe I give them bangs to cover it up? Uh oh, I got that clothing fold wrong, let's make the dress uh, solid black instead, yeah that'll work. This is the first of many reasons why drawing is such a challenge, that complete lack of control. And there's a simple test for the validity of this. That last drawing you made that turned out like crap, were you aiming to make a crappy drawing? If that was your goal, then nice, you've succeeded. But I bet you don't feel that way about it now. If you weren't trying to make a bad drawing, then why did you? Come on, just do better, go back and do it again, but do it right this time. You can't though, right? Because you don't have any control at all over the outcome. That's the fundamental nature of drawing, the only thing you control is the choice to do it. If you had any control at all over the final result, we'd all just choose to draw like Kim Jong-gi all the time, or at the very least, to always draw at our own upper limit. But it just doesn't work that way. Do not be fooled however, this is actually a blessing in disguise. Here's why. Chapter 2. Relinquish Control Seeing as we don't actually have control in the first place, that stress is starting to look a little bit illogical, yeah? If you don't have control, then what's gonna happen is what's gonna happen, whether you like it or not. Your next drawing could be the worst thing you've ever made. Or even more disastrously, it could be great and become your new peak, the unattainable standard you hold yourself to from now on. Whichever or wherever in between it ends up being, why are you letting the outcome of your drawings determine your mood? Would you as quickly let the weather determine if your day is going to be stressful or peaceful? Because effectively that's what you're doing, you're giving the outside world permission to make or break your day. If you had the option to enjoy making those bad drawings every bit as much as the good ones, what impact do you think that would have on your growth? Would your progress slow down? Would you start making bad drawings all the time for the rest of forever because there's no pressure to make good art anymore? Or would your learning accelerate? Would you start to dive head first into the things you don't understand and know that you're bad at, but now can enjoy and thrive with without having to carry all that extra weight? I'd wager that you'd start making better art. Granted, maybe not in the short term, I don't know your relationship with art and stress, it could be that in your case, the only reason you pick up a pencil to draw in the first place is a feeling of not being good enough and the constant all-consuming desire that you have to push yourself even further. If that's you, then sure, in the short term you might dip a little, since the thing that's driving you is so closely tied to the fear of falling behind. But if that's you, I think you probably need this advice more than anyone, it's just gonna be harder to take. And no matter who you are, for all of us, in the long term, dropping that weight and doing what you can't is going to make you a better artist. If you're creating art from a place of fear, it's like burning dirty fuel. It might get you moving, hell, it might get you racing, but the progress you make is directly proportional to the stress you're going to feel and the damage that you're doing long term. But who am I to assert all of this, right? What's my experience been that I can say this with so much confidence? Chapter 3, Where's the Proof? For reference, here's some more of my 2018 art, the very beginning of my art journey. Here's some from 2019. How about 2020? 21? 22? My progress was excruciatingly slow. At the start, I had it in my head that I was really far behind and desperately needed to catch up, and fast. You might think that this would light a fire of motivation under me and that it'd push me to work harder, and in a way it 
kind of did, if I'm doing my best to be fair and unbiased. Over those years, I did go from playing video games all day to drawing for hours instead, but my progress was slow, way slower than it needed to be. Because I came into art with all this extra weight, this expectation that I had to get good fast, it meant that my practice was really sloppy. I avoided doing the things that challenged me because those were so much harder and they were harder because the cost of failure was so great. It wasn't just one bad drawing, it was 19 years of previous failures all weighing on the back of that pencil. When you're carrying around all that extra weight every time you pick up your pencil, you're amplifying the passive cost of drawing. In reality, the cost should be essentially zero, right? There's almost no physical exertion needed to move a pencil around, so the burden is entirely mental. But for the first few years that I was drawing, that passive cost couldn't have been higher. It was high because when I made a bad drawing, it felt like it was my fault. That I could have chosen to draw a better one if I only put in the effort, so I must have just been lazy when I did that last one. It was high because to make the art I dreamed of making, I'd have to do all those things that I was so bad at. And doing what I was bad at meant making more bad drawings where I couldn't avoid all of this. With the stakes being so high, it's no wonder that making art can be such a struggle for us artists. But when you become aware of where that stress is coming from, you're able to see it clearly for the first time, and slowly, over time, learn to let it go. A year ago, painting the entire Horn map would have been a pipe dream for me, but here I am now, about halfway through. So if you really want to learn fast and become the best artist you can be, ironically that kind of starts outside the paper. Focusing on cultivating and understanding of your own mind and figuring out where your stress and hesitation even comes from is the single most influential thing you can do to grow as an artist. So good luck out there.